Changing minds one thought at a time Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining us here on Changing Minds Online. Hello, Dr. Sims, are you there? Yes, ma'am, I am. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining Dr. Akina Finch and myself, Vanessa Canterbury. We are looking forward to your interview. This is such an honor. Well, I uh, thank you for having me, uh, Dr. A and Ms. B. It is good for us to be here, and uh, I'm honored that you will allow me a few moments to be with you and your audience. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So we're going to go right in because we know you got an amazing message to be able to share with the audience. So, Dr. Finch, go ahead and take it away. Yes, yes. So, hello, Dr. Sam. We're so honored to have you. And you know, one thing we all want to know is how you're using social media to change the world. Well, um, oh, my goodness. Uh, what what can I say? Where do I even start? I, I guess I will start on my birthday uh, this past June the 6th. I turned 50 years old, and uh, the uh, virtual church that I started uh, turned one year old on June the 14th. So what my fellowship did, uh, they did what we call pass the cast. And basically we had Dr. Akina and Sister Vanessa, we had, I know, we had 10 plus of my fellowship just get on and took about 10 minutes apiece just to talk about the impact that I've had on their life. And, you know, the majority of them I have never met. But through social media, we are touching lives and we are impacting the world. Um, I broadcast every day. Uh, This morning I had somebody from the Bahamas tuning in. Uh, The other day I had somebody from um, the U.K., tuned in. Uh, You know, the United States is always represented, but with the advent of live streaming, uh, i.e. Periscope, uh, Facebook Live now, uh, YouTube is getting in the game, and there are a couple of other um, outlets that are getting into the live stream game. But just with, with the new wave of social media technologies, we are able to take our particular messages uh, to a greater audience, and it is blowing me away. You know, I I love it. You know, uh, prior to a year ago, uh, we had things like Twitter and Facebook and uh, Instagram has grown some legs, but social media was a lot more static, if you will. Uh, a picture is a picture or a tweet is a tweet. But now with live streaming, it is dynamic and it is real time. And so you are able to be who you are and so many people can hear your message. Because one of the things that was holding me back, and a lot of people may laugh at me when I shared this, but I was being held back by my by my own fears that, you know what, nobody want to listen to you. You don't have a message because a lot of times when you are kind of isolated in the four walls of your comfort zone and your particular neighborhood that's really local and a lot of people are not gravitating towards you because you are local, you know, you kind of think nobody want to hear what you have to say. But now through social media and how much it has grown recently, a lot of people are tuning in to what I have to say, and it is blowing me away. So I probably, I hope I answered the question. (laughs) But, you know, you know, speakers and preachers and coaches, you know, we're pretty long-winded. So I, you know, to really put uh, an answer in a nutshell for you, I'm using social media to really uh, give uh, a a lot of – sustenance to what I'm doing and reaching as many, many people as I can. And I have a movement called the Million Smile March. I want to make a million people smile. And I'm telling you, that is getting closer to being a reality than it ever has when I started it. 
Wow. That that is um absolutely amazing. Um, because so many people don't understand this new technology world. And I could so relate That's right. because I didn't understand this this was like, okay, you just get on Facebook, you just put a message up and and call it a day. It, this is right. totally different. And now people want to see who's the person that's behind the messages now. They want to see, are you a real that's person? Right. And, I've, and I've been asked many a times when before live streaming was taking place, are you a real person? Because your, your messages are too positive. I said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you you know, And you know what? This, this may sound funny, but maybe not to you and Dr. Ikena. This may sound very funny. I went to... Uh, Duluth, Minnesota, which is about two and a half out, uh, hours outside of Minneapolis, and um, to baptize one of the the new believers that's part of our virtual church. And the first thing she said when I pulled up into her parents' driveway, the first thing Tori said was, "You're real." <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it blew me away because even though she was she was watching me pretty much every day, and uh, she was an atheist turned Christian, and she's been on this journey for about a year now, and uh, she she was at a place in her life she didn't want to live, but one day she got onto one of my broadcasts, and, and we have been family ever since. And uh, I sent her a Bible. I sent her a care package, you know, when she gave her life to the Lord and everything, and we just been loving on her. And when I met her for the very first time, uh, Vanessa, the first words out of her mouth was, you're real. I met another family of the virtual church uh, several months ago, and I visited with them two weeks ago in Tampa, Florida. The husband, Brother Mark, kissed me on the jaw and said, Dr. Sims, you're real. And so now, you know, we we – For the longest time, a lot of us that are in this radio industry, the television industry, we've been waiting on that big deal uh, for some Mm -hmm. big radio station to pick us up, some television network to pick us up. But now we are, for the lack of a better word, we are the celebrities of our particular Mm -hmm. message. I mean, you Mm -hmm. and I, we do motivation. So we are motivational icons now. We have a voice now. And if we Mm -hmm. can be consistent, and that's one of my biggest big words right now. If you can be consistent with what you are preaching, for the lack of a better word, if you can be mm-hmm. consistent with your message, you can grow a following. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how I met um, Dr. Finch, is through social media, which was Paris. Amen. Um, Amen. That's how I met. I, I met Dr. Finch as well. <laughs> yes, that's how I met both of you, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And you make amazing I, connections, and your connections go so much bigger. You wind up forming a friendship, you know, and that's what it's that's about. It, that's so. exactly right. That's mm-hmm. it. That's exactly right. You know, it's uh, it, it's amazing. And, and let me say this, and and y'all, excuse me. Let me go ahead and make a. Let me go ahead and make an admission. Let me go ahead and confess something. Hold on. Good evening, everybody. My name is Dr. Walter Sims, and I'm addicted to social media. <laughs> <laughs> I just got. I just needed to throw that out. And, and let me say this before we get further into the interview. Let me say this: you will never know how far your reach is because there are people that I'm coming across every day that have listened or are listening to me. They never mm-hmm. like. They never press the screen to give a heart. They never mm-hmm. share anything. But every day. They run to their particular device to see what I have to say, and it just blesses mm-hmm. me because I was getting a I was getting a Subway sandwich the other evening for for myself. I had it's been a long day, and I had been in church and everything. And uh, one of the young ladies that worked behind the counter this was her second job, and she said, "Doctor Sims, I look forward to your motivation." Every day, I have a young man. I have oh, my wow. nephew that I'm I'm living with. He's living with me now, and I want you and I to talk about how we can uh, pour some positivity into him because he kind of did something bad in Atlanta, and I had to go get him. And I told his mama I'm going to get him some positive influences around him. And 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 I, she never liked anything I said. She never re re brought uh, reposted anything I put up, but she listens to me every day. So one of the things that uh, sometimes one of the things that social media aids is people kind of throwing in the towel because 
you don't get that those likes. You don't get the mm-hmm. pat on the back. And a lot of times the the appreciation is not instant. But somebody's listening. I I host a local television show here in the Dothan area. We call it the Wiregrass. And one of my sponsors is a health store, and I get all of my alkaline water from them. So that's how they um, subsidize their time on my show in commercial form. And the the older gentleman, him and his wife run it, and he told me uh, last summer, he said, Dr. Sims, you have gotten so much better. And he said, Dr. Sims, don't you get discouraged because as long as you have something to say, somebody is listening. And so mm-hmm. I just applaud you two this evening. Keep doing what you do because a lot of times we may not get all the accolades. We may not win a Grammy Award. We may not win an Emmy. We may not get an Oscar. But somebody's life is being touched by what we do by way of social media. I totally agree. That. Yes, yeah, so, totally agree. so true. And, you know, Dr. Sims, I want to take it a little bit further, right, in that vein? Yes, ma'am. You know, you say that uh, people need to hear that because, you know, they think social media is going to be instant. As soon as I post it Mm -hmm. out there, I'm going to get this huge following and everything's going to be happening. But there is a finesse to this thing. And I want to tell the story of how your followership has changed since you uh, joined the world of Periscope? Well, you know, and and, and I'm very, very glad you brought that up, uh, Dr. Ikena, because a lot of times we we do fall into the trap of thinking that our success, whatever that looks like, is going to be instantaneous and it's going to be quick. But at the end of the day, social media is still social meaning you have to grow your followership organically, meaning it's still uh, that person-to-person interaction. You still have to engage with the community. We're building a community, and that takes time. I have a quote that simply says, you cannot sow and reap at the same time. Uh, I tell everybody, uh, Ms. Vanessa, Dr. Ikena, Periscope found me. Uh, I got fired from my corporate job. Uh, April the 17th of last year. And so uh, one of the things my wife asked me after she calmed down from a hurricane to a tropical storm, the first thing she said was, well, what are you going to do now? I said, well, I got time to to, to grow my business. No, what are you going to do differently? I said, well, I I, I got time to grow my business. And uh, I found a young man here in town that was pushing around an ice cream cart. And uh, I got in contact with him. Uh, He was on Instagram. I saw him on Instagram. We got in contact. We set up a meeting at one of the local sandwich shops uh, for me to interview him for my television show. So time I walked into the sandwich shop, he was sitting there on his phone, guys, and he was watching Periscope. He was broadcasting. He told me, Dr. Sam, Dr. Sam, come here, come here. There's a new app out. It's called Periscope. You got to get it. You're going to love it. It's live streaming. And he was so excited. And I looked at his phone. I said, Hey, everybody. And, man, he said, you got to download. He told his father, he said, hey, guys, this is Dr. Sims. He's wonderful. He's motivational. He's inspirational. He's charismatic. He looks like Steve Harvey. He's going to be on this in an hour. And I did not think twice about it. So I interviewed him. I go home, and the Lord spoke to me, y'all. He said, download Periscope. I'm like, well, okay. I downloaded Periscope, and it was love at first broadcast. And so, I was motivating in the morning. I was motivating in the evening. I was playing my music, and I was following people. People were following me. Rodney Perry followed me, and a lot of people began to follow me because of Rodney Perry. And three years ago, one of my mentees told me I needed to start an online church. And I really didn't have time to pursue it like I should have, but the Lord inspired my heart 2 a.m. in the morning, June the 14th, opened the, first, opened the doors of the first church of Periscope, and the rest is history. And so now, by mm-hmm. way, I do the church. So I do the church. Now, I'm in that church lane all by myself as a pastor of the First Church of Periscope. And now my fellowship also knows that I motivate in the morning. I do my coach scope in the afternoon. And then we do our church scope uh, at night. And I'm going to start a mirror challenge at midnight Monday. It'll probably be midnight Sunday going into Monday morning, and we're going to do a seven-day mirror challenge, and it's going to be for the grown and sexy. If you don't want to change, 
You can't come into this scope. It's going to be for the grown and sexy that are ready to change. Because my quote says, it's easier to point a finger than look in a mirror. So the homework, the free homework assignment everybody's going to have is everybody got to go to Dollar General and get them a cosmetic mirror, a compact mirror that they can put in their hand. And at the end of the seven-day challenge, the people that have showed up the most in each of the schools at midnight are going to go in a drawing for eight weeks of coaching with me, which is valued at $12,000. Oh. Mm. All right, mm. now. <laughs> All right, now. But, see, this is the thing that you you said something about when you lost your job and your wife was like, okay, so what are you going to do now? I can relate That's to right. that. Because when I lost my job in 2011, I couldn't find a job for two years. And so I was like, okay, I'm a single mother. What the heck do you do? And I had to find right. a way to do something because, the, the, as we say, the technology totally changed. I had to learn this new thing of technology. And so as the more I continue to figure this whole thing out of this technology world to be able to be a business owner, it was different, but then it kept growing so fast. It's like, wait a minute, hold on. My mind kept going, and so many things have happened and transpired, which has been absolutely an amazing journey. It wasn't easy, but it's so well worth it, because what if I would have quit? I wouldn't have met Dr. Finch, and Dr. Finch pulled me, and she's seen me do a scope, but, you know, Periscope is like, I'm an introvert. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> that is the hardest thing to do is to be up there and then, you know, like, okay, is anybody in here? Are you talking to yourself? You know, you quite, you have those questions because it's different. And so Dr. Finch, I mean, Dr. Finch turns around and she started doing pass the cast. And I did a pass the cast. And every time I did a pass the cast, she said, hold on, wait a minute. She closed out one day, and I would never, ever, ever, ever forget this. And she called me out of all those people. She called me out. And she said something about you, Vanessa. I don't know what it is, but you got a powerful Amen. message, and you need to share Amen. that message. And so, because somebody is waiting to hear your message, and before I knew, I was bawling. I was like, "Oh my goodness!" Because you know that inside you that you have a powerful message, but sometimes you just That's need right. that confirmation. And God will, be, and I'm a believer that God will bring His people and to be able to deliver that message on his behalf. And so I, I, I turned around and I made a decision that I would no longer hold my gifts back. I'm not apologizing for them. I'm going to be bold with it. And because I know in the depths of my soul, somebody is waiting for me to show up. In order for me to show up, I have to share that message. So I totally agree Amen. with what you're saying. And it's just honor Amen. to be able to pop it to your scope and just to be able to hear what you're saying on your scope. And I didn't even know that you knew me. I was like, wait a minute, he knows me? What, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so, That's right. I, I was like, "All right, now." I said, "Okay, well, I know somebody knows me. Okay, cool." <laughs> so, I, I, you know, I, I'm a believer that if you want to be seen, you have to be able to show up, and that means you need to be on live stream. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, and one of my quotes in line with that, I tell I tell my followership and I tell my clients: in order to be seen, you must be visible. You know, but and, mm-hmm. and Jesus said, and and we got another movement that's W D J S. What did Jesus say? Jesus simply said, uh, "You can't hide your light under a bushel. What good is a light if it's hid? You know, you can be a light mm-hmm. on a hill, you can be bright on top of a hill, but if you got your light hid, what good is it? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so you have to step up and step out." And stand out, you know, and that's mm-hmm. just opening your mouth and speak. And a lot of times people say, well, nobody listening to me. Well, what are you saying? What are you saying? Mm-hmm. And it's not about how much you say. It's the quality behind what you say. And that is simply mm-hmm. walking in your purpose, walking in that thing that God has called you to mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that is so That is awesome. You know, I want to, as we are getting ready to come, close to the time, I want you to really address this one for the people. You said, but what are you saying? And a lot of people get their excuses, but I don't have anything to say. But I don't have anything to say. And I do believe we just had wonderful dialogue about our message from within. So what do you tell your people who are telling you, they have nothing to say. There's no reason for them to be on social media 
when you know that they have a word. Please. Amen. Very, very quickly and concisely, you do have a message. Your life is really the only certification that you really need uh, in Ooh. order to be a voice. Um, what that really is a translation of, i.e., I don't have anything to say, what it really translates is you are walking in fear, you're living in fear, you have allowed fear to tell you and to make you hush so that no one will hear your message. And, yes, you have a message, but what you have to really get your arms around is that you are worthy to speak the message. So many times we have allowed what we've been through to dictate who we are. But you have to understand that is a piece of your testimony. What happened to you is not who you are. You do have a voice. You do have a reason for being here because the two most important days in a person's life is the day that they were born and the day that they figure out why. Yes, you have a voice this evening, and you need to to tell yourself and tell fear to take a hike, and you're not going to be pimped by fear anymore. You're going to say, listen, 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 I am bringing, oh. give me your pimp card. You Fear, you're not pimping me anymore. You're not selling me short. You are not taking all of my all of my residual and using it against me. I'm going to take this residual and I'm going to hold up my banner and say, listen, I've been here, I've been there, and I don't look like what I've been through. And yes, I got a story to tell, and I'm going to tell it. Now run and tell that. Oh. Come on, somebody. Oh, come on. All right, Dr. Sam. <laughs> you know, oh. so I got to follow up with that one. I got to follow up with oh. that one. So, you know, I want you to tell the people where they can find you because, you know, somebody may be encouraged by this message right now, and they say, I need a little bit more of that doctor. Where do they get <laughs> more of that doctor? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, listen, just run to my website. Uh, I got one website that points to everything, drwaltersims.com. Go there, and that points to my, my ministermotivation.com website and everything that I'm doing. Uh, but the easiest way to find me is send me a tweet, uh, Dr. Walter Sims, at Dr. Walter Sims. Uh, find me on Periscope, at Dr. Walter Sims. Find me on Facebook, Walter Henry Sims. That is my personal profile on Facebook. But the easy, easy, easy way to find me is send me a tweet, at Dr. Walter Sims. My business number is 205-225-9757. And reach out and text me. And, and, and I got a new word. This is one of my words I, I, I put in the Urban Dictionary. I'm Googleable now. If you Google my name, all of my information will pop up. <laughs> I'm Googleable now. And I know that you have one more platform that we both share. You know, I do believe you're the morning man now, right? Tell That's us right. It. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly right. We um we do we are on the radio. Uh we are on a platform together, WJPMG radio. And again, if you go to drwaltersim.com, dot com, all of that information will pop up. So I'm I'm using I'm using my voice and I'm consistent across every platform uh that I have and, and I'm very thankful about that. And when you see me on camera, I e when you watch me on Periscope, I have been in front of the camera. I did a stint I did two seasons of a talk show in the Dallas Fort Worth area, uh, and that prepped me for what I'm doing now. And the reason I seem so comfortable in front of the camera, I've just been doing it for a minute now. The reason I seem so easy on the radio, I've been doing it. So everything in your life that happens to you points to your purpose. And once again, thank you guys for having me. And Dr. Akina, uh, Vanessa, anytime y'all need me, in the words of Michael Jackson, I'll be there, I'll be there, just call my name, and I'll be there. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, and the feeling is definitely mutual. You know, Dr. Absolutely. Sam, before you go, I want you to have the final word about using social media to change the world. Why did you decide to use social media as your platform when you could have used anything else? 
why did you decide to use social media and to make a difference in this world today? Well, uh, again, the very first piece of that, everybody, figure out why you're here. Number two, the question you must answer, what is the quickest way for me to make the greatest impact? Because Jesus did say, greater works than these will you do. What was he talking Mm -hmm. about? I don't think we can get any bigger than bringing somebody back from the dead or even rising from the dead ourselves. So he was not necessarily talking about the grandiosity of a miracle particularly. Maybe he was talking about the number of people that we're going to be able to impact. And so the question you have to answer is, what is my why? And then what's the Mm -hmm. quickest way for me to make the greatest impact? And to answer that question, the biggest answer is using social media the right way. Mm -hmm. And so find out why you're here, and the quickest way to get your particular message out is social media when you use it in the right way. So, again, Mm -hmm. figure out why you're here, and hop on social media to get your message out. Because if you're not living on purpose, I believe you're a spiritual felon, and we need to come lock you up. Oh, I like that. Yes. Vanessa, do you have any closing words for our audience tonight? I I just believe that, you know, what he said, I totally agree um, because I can relate to it. And so many people just need to understand that, you know, you could you have a message that's so big, and then you went through so much mess in your life. Your mess is your message. Share it because somebody else could be able Come to on. be healed from what you've been through. Come on, that is beautiful. <laughs> and you know, if something that Dr. Walter Sims said tonight resonated with you, please find this podcast and many more at ChangingMindsOnline dot com. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Tuned In, and, of course, our YouTube channel. So thank you so much, Dr. Sims, for being here with me and Vanessa tonight. We definitely appreciate you, and we thank you so much for giving us such a powerful show tonight. We're so grateful. Well, thank you again for having me. You are very welcome. God bless. And good night, everyone.